الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, my respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته this is the 54th episode of our series Mercy to Mankind, a series about the biography of the best human being to have ever walked on the face of this earth, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In this episode, inshallah, we shall look at some of the platoons, some of the military activities that took place after the Battle of Hunayn, after the Battle of Hunayn and Ta'if, which were two closely related battles fought against a single enemy which was the tribe of Thaqif and Hawazin who after suffering a defeat at Hunayn fled to Ta'if and then embraced Islam and after it the major battle that took place was the battle of Tabuk which took place in the ninth year of Hijra and in between that the Prophet وسلم, because the entire Arabian Peninsula had embraced Islam there were some tribes here and there who was still showing some amount of resistance and needed to be disciplined and there were some other tribes who had embraced Islam and they required that teachers and preachers be sent to them to teach them the way of performing Salah to teach them how to give Zakah to teach them the basics of Islam to teach them the Quran to convey to them the message of Islam so after this battle the Prophet وسلم, he sent many of his Sahaba to these tribes some in order to teach them some Sahaba in order to collect the Zakat that was obligatory upon them and some Sahaba in order to discipline some of these tribes who were showing resistance and as I mentioned one of the main reasons of uh, the sending of these ambassadors was to collect the Zakat the Zakat that became due upon them after the passing of one year the Prophet وسلم, sent some of his Sahaba for this purpose and it's important to note and mention over here that one of the principles of Islam and one of the teachings where the Prophet ﷺ stressed a lot concerning these ambassadors who were out to collect zakat of these tribes which was in form of camels, goats, sheep and the harvest and to bring it back to Medina to be distributed among the poor or to be distributed in that tribe itself to the poor of that tribe itself the Prophet وسلم, stressed these ambassadors, he taught them not to take any form of gifts from the members of those tribes to which they were going to collect the zakah and how much in need and how much in need of this principle are we today. The Prophet وسلم, knew that these bribes in the name of gifts would definitely be given to some of the ambassadors so that they have a soft stance towards the people whom they are collecting zakat from. A person in the name of gift may give a bribe to one of the ambassadors of the Prophet وسلم, asking him in return to do a favor upon him by not collecting his zakat or be lenient more than needed in collecting the zakat. Therefore, when one of the Sahaba returned to the Prophet وسلم, and he gave the zakat saying, this is the zakat which I have collected and this is the gift which I have received. The Prophet وسلم, was filled with anger. He was filled with anger. He climbed up the member, the pulpit and said, and he said that, did he not sit at his home? He of course did not name the Sahabi, but he made a general announcement. That why is it that when I send someone, he comes back and says, this is for you and this is for me. Why does he not sit back at his home and see whether he gets these gifts? Meaning that the gifts which he gets must be given to the general wealth of the Muslims. 
and it must not be taken at the first place itself because there's a doubt that that gift is a form of bribery therefore Islam does not allow the judges to take gifts from the people because it can be a form of bribery this was one of the important teachings the Prophet ﷺ gave to the people who he sent out as collectors of zakat and therefore we can see that the collectors of the Prophet ﷺ, they were extremely honest people they were extremely honest people the love of the tribe or the hatred of the tribe to whom they were going to it did not have an effect on their actions one of the Sahabi when he went to Khaybar to collect the produce of the Jews and the Jews tried to bribe him he said hello people oh Jews you are the most hated people to me but this hatred it will not exhort me to collect more than what is required so neither hatred nor the love of the tribe would have an effect on the actions of these honest Sahaba who would go out to collect the zakat of these people so some of the uh, activities of the Prophet ﷺ in this time period was to send out people to teach Islam to send out people to collect the zakat of various tribes and to send out some of the Sahaba with small army to discipline some of the tribes that needed to be disciplined and one of these missions was of Uyayna ibn Hisn anhu. he was sent in the ninth year of Hijrah in the month of Muharram with 50 horsemen to some of the tribes of Banu Tamim who had stopped paying the jizya and were asking the other tribes of the same region not to give the jizya to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Uyayna bin Hasan he secretly moved until he reached there and he was successful in the mission in which he was sent for he came back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with many of the people of Banu Tamim as captives and then shortly after Uyayna came back many of the leaders of the Banu Tamim they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the form of a delegation and they requested the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to free their captives there was some uh, some poetry because in those days when two tribes they met with each other each tribe tried to boast about itself and the other tried to reply there was this competition of poetry and oratory between the tribe of Banu Tamim and the people of uh, the Muslims of Medina and finally the people of Banu Tamim they embraced Islam the Prophet وسلم, he hosted them for those many days and he set all of their captives free one of the interesting missions was the mission of Ali bin Abi Talib anhu. the Prophet وسلم, dispatched him along with 150 or more men to go to the tribe of Tai to go to the tribe of Tai which lived on the northern borders of the Arabian Peninsula close to the borders of Asham, Syria and this was the tribe of the famous Hatim al tai Hatim al tai who was known for his generosity and this tribe they had a religion similar to the religion of the Christians they were not upon the religion of the rest of the Arabs not upon the polytheistic pagan faith but they had a religion similar to the religion of the Arabs when Ali bin Abi Talib anhu, attacked this tribe of Tai, the leader of this tribe or one of the noble men Adi ibn Hatim who was the son of Hatim Tai Hatim Tai had passed away but his son Adi who was the chief and the main leader as well as the main religious figure of this tribe he somehow managed to escape and enter into Syria or to some of the regions that were neighboring to Syria however his sister was made a captive and she was brought back to Medina along with the other captives and the war booty which Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who had gained from this from this mission when she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and a conversation took place between her and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and she pleaded that O oh, Prophet of Allah I am an old woman and I'm and I'll, uh, and I'll be of no service to you and she pleaded and uh, asked the Prophet وسلم, to show mercy to her and set her free the Prophet وسلم, set her free and she couldn't believe her ears when the Prophet وسلم, set her free she returned to her homeland and then she went to her brother Adi who was the leader of the tribe and she said to him that oh Adi I am coming from a man who is more generous than your father Hatim al tai was cited as an example of generosity not only in the Arabs but in the other places as well 
She said that, oh, Adi, I'm coming from a man who is more generous than your father. Therefore, it is your duty, whether you go in a state of security or in a state that you are frightened and scared, but you must definitely go and meet this person. Adi bin Hatim, on the request of his sister, he came to the Prophet wasallam while he had no security, no guarantee of safety, nothing. And he came straight away to the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet wasallam welcomed Adi and he took Adi along with him and they had a conversation which led to Adi radiallahu ta'ala and who finally embracing Islam. And the conversation that was between the Prophet wasallam and Adi the Prophet وسلم, informed Adi of some details of his religion, of the religion of Adi, which Ali was shocked to know, which Adi was shocked to know, and at once he believed, in fact he was certain that these details, which are unknown or have been uh, intentionally hidden from the people, can never be known to anyone except uh, to a true Prophet of God. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he uh, asked Adi to embrace Islam, Adi said, "O oh, Prophet of Allah, I am a man of religion." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Aren't you a follower of the Rakusi religion?" Adi said, "Yes." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I know your religion better than you." Adi was surprised to hear this. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told, "Are you not the one who takes one quarter?" of the wealth of his people, of the gains of his people, which is forbidden to you in your religion. When Adi heard this, he was surprised, for he knew that I am the one who takes one quarter of the gains of my people in the name of religion, while this is forbidden in my religion. Adi at once knew that the person before him is none other than the true messenger of Allah, Adi radiallahu ta'ala, and who was overjoyed, and he embraced Islam. One of the interesting ahadith which Adi radiallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated is a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari as well. Adi radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that while I was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man came and he complained of poverty. And then another man came and he complained of highway robbery. That there are robbers on the highway, on the caravan routes, who are uh, launching attacks on the caravans that are passing and they are looting those caravans. That is the way of uh, their survival. It is not for some military or other purposes, for some political reasons. It is simply the way of living that they attack caravans and they live upon the stolen or the looted money they get from those caravans. And Adi radiallahu ta'ala and who he was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when these people came and they complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about these things. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to Adi ibn Abi Hatim, Adi ibn Hatim radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and said that, O oh, Adi, if Allah gives you a long life, you shall see. You shall see that a woman, she comes all the way from Hira, which is in Iraq. She comes all the way from Hira. She performs tawaf of the Kaaba all alone. She comes all alone from Hira, performs tawaf of the Kaaba, fearing nothing but Allah alone. And you shall open the treasures of Kisra, of Kisra bin Hurmuz, the king of Persia. And you shall see a time. If you live long, you shall see that day when a person will go out with a handful of gold and silver to give it to someone in charity. But there would be no one to accept it from him. Adi radiallahu ta'ala anhu got a life in which he saw two of these things. In which he saw two of these things. He later said to his students that I have seen, I have seen with my own eyes a woman come alone all the way from Hira, from beyond the borders of the Arabian Peninsula, from Iraq, all the way up to Mecca, all alone, on the back of a camel, and circumambulate the Kaaba, fearing nothing but Allah. It was a matter of time, just a few years had passed away through the blessing of Islam. When the rule of Islam was executed in that land, that land of the Arabian Peninsula, that earlier had so many skirmishes and uh, nomadic people who were waiting on highways to loot these caravans. Finally, it turned in a matter of few years into a place that a woman, she comes all along, crosses the length of the Arabian Peninsula 
and she fears none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Adi radiallahu ta'ala who gives a witness that I have seen this event with my own eyes. As for the second prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the treasures of Kisra, Adi said, I was one of those people who, who, who opened the treasures of Kisra. I was present in the army that attacked Madain and I was one of those people who opened the treasures of Kisra. The Arabs could have never imagined. Leave aside conquering over the land of Kisra, they could have never imagined even standing in front of Kisra. They, was, they felt so belittled in front of those two mighty Roman and Persian empires. And the Persians on the other hand, they never ever gave any form of respect, attention whatsoever to the Arabs. They treated them like shepherds and slaves. But there came a time in a matter of few years that the treasures of Kisra were laid into the feet of the Muslims. And Adi ibn Abi Hatim, Adi ibn Hatim was one of those who opened those treasures. And then he says to his students that if you live long, you shall definitely see a time when a man goes out with a handful of gold and silver, yet finds no one to accept these things. Perhaps Adi radiallahu ta'ala who was not one of those who saw that. But if you read the books of history, we definitely find that in the latter days to come, especially in the caliphate of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah be pleased with him, may Allah have mercy upon him, there did come a time when there was so much abundance of wealth that a person would go out to give charity yet find no one who would accept this charity from him. This, my dear brothers and sisters, was uh, two important incidents from those different platoons and missions with the Prophet ﷺ dispatched in the beginning of the ninth year of Hijrah and in the end of the eighth year of Hijrah. There were other small missions as well which we did not take or looking at the importance of these two incidents I narrated it to you you can go into much further detail into the extensive into the books that have uh, served the seal of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam extensively inshallah in the coming episode we shall look at the last expedition of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam which marked the beginning of the spread of Islam throughout the world which was the battle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the Roman Empire the battle of Tabuk inshallah we'll look at it in the coming episodes up till then fi amanillah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh